بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الارض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم جزاك الله خير ام الله بلس ايتش اند افري ون اوف يو هو ار بيبل هو ار هير اند بيبل هو ار واتشينج ام وي ار كونتينيوينج اون ذا غولستان اوف سعدي ذا جاردن اوف ويزدوم اند ويك نمبر 2 اوف ا فور ويك بروجرام لاست ويك وي توكت اباوت ذا جريت بوم اوف سعدي اون ذا ديفينيشن اوف هيومن بيينج اند وي اولسو ديد ا Uh, from the his famous uh, write, writing uh, a book called Karima or Panj Ganj, uh, we did the first uh, three poems on on Allah and on His Messenger and on the Nafs. Um, so today we're going to actually start the uh, the uh, Golistan itself. But before we start, one of the thing about Saadi that that separates him from a lot of the people is that he. Uh, you know his name is Muslihuddin uh he the, the son of Mushrifuddin um he his father used to work for the Atabak uh, government as a low post uh, and he was born in Shiraz the city that he really loved there's so many poems uh, about Shiraz and his Golistan that really melts your heart the amount of love he had for the city um in the city of of poets the city of of scholars um many of the great scholars such as hafiz came from shiraz and and uh, other uh, notables but he leaves shiraz at age 16 he's about a, he's a teenager and he leaves it and he and uh, and he goes on this travel this this journey and this journey is for him to find himself to find his lord and to understand the religion that he is part of because one of the great scholars uh, we asked him american scholar he said why did you become alim why did you i said i just wanted to learn for myself i just wanted to learn the religion because somebody was saying oh no this is haram somebody was saying this is halal i said you know what i want to learn this myself what is so a lot of these people they didn't go to learn to become a scholar or become a alim or become famous they wanted to learn because they had the love for allah and his messenger and they wanted to know about their deen so he goes on this journey and one of the amazing thing about the year of his birth he died he was born in year 6 or 6 of hijra which is the same year that fakhruddin ar-razi died so as always you would see with the death of a great uh, scholar you know the birth of another scholar happened but people are unaware of it because he actually sadi emerges way uh, he, he leaves when he's about 16 he's he's gone for about 32 years on this travel He just goes. He goes to Nizamia, the famous university that Imam Ghazali used to teach there, uh, by built by Nizam al Mulk in Baghdad. And uh, Baghdad is a Persian word. It's a Farsi word. It's not Arabic. Bagh is means city, and Dad means justice, the city of justice. So he is there, and he studies at this. Uh, in one narration, he studies 17 years there, and then he not only studies, but he becomes a teacher there. and he mentions the beautiful line about imam ghazali who was there before him over 120 years before saadi so then he keeps traveling he goes all around the world he ends up in you know goes to india goes to habasha uh, ends up in china he's he's a world traveler but during his travel he is you know the quran says travel and see the see the author see what we have created and also see what we brought and will be destroyed so it's a lesson to see these things my goodness look at the roman colosseum at one point they were the rulers now it's just a bunch of rocks remaining right so this is just a uh, learning about life so he travels and he goes and then he gets uh, this is the time of crusaders so he actually become a prisoner of war and they put him in these they they dig tunnels so they put him in the tunnel and he's digging for seven years he's digging tunnel uh for the crusaders then the the muslim government they actually uh they actually buy all of the prisoners of war and they give them gold and stuff to to do a trade off and one of the people that gets freed is saadi from this uh dungeon that he was in but what struck me the most and people who have read i know sidi hashman and they all read the uh, golistan multiple times What has struck me most about his work, you don't see any sad line in there where he complains, "Oh, these crusaders, they did this to me. I was in a dungeon." He doesn't complain about anything. 
because they believed in Qadr. This is from Allah. Who brought the Crusaders? Allah brought them. Who brought the Mongols? Allah brought them. They always looked at themselves and they said, what wrong have we done that we deserve this? If we fix ourselves, then Allah will fix our situation. Right? Then Allah will fix our situation. But if you don't, if we keep blaming others, oh, it's the American, it's the Russian, it's this, it's the Cuban, it's the, we, can, we are not looking, you know, uh, uh, one of the great Indian poet Ghalib said, he said, Omar par Ghalib yehi bool karta raha, dool chehre par te aur aayna saaf karta raha. He said, you made this mistake all your life, O Ghalib. The dirt was on your face and you were wiping the mirror. And that's what a lot of the modern people are doing. They're wiping the mirror. They're not looking at themselves. And the journey of Saadi is a journey of looking at himself, finding himself in order to find Allah. Because if you are lost, there's a beautiful bumper sticker that says, don't follow me, I'm lost. If you lost yourself, you can't help anyone, and you can't get to any direction, any the place that you want to go. There's an amazing story in the Gulistan of Saadi who was about this man who's going to the Hajj. So Saadi sees him and he says, "Where are you going?" He says, "I'm going to the Kaaba." And then he start he start the journey. It just keeps going. And Saadi shouts at him. He said, "Tarsam narasiba Kaaba, ay Arabi, kin rahke tu mi ravi ba Turkestan ast." He said, I don't think you will ever make, make it to the Kaaba because this is going to Turkmenistan. He said, you're going the wrong direction. So the point of his travel was to learn, right? We have cre not created the jinn and the human except to worship us, Allah says. But how do you worship Allah? Through knowledge. You have to know how to worship Him. You have to know how to make wudu, how to pray, how to... There's, there's rules and regulation that you have to learn. So he learned all of that to worship Allah in the most appropriate way, in the way that Allah wants him to worship him. So he goes on this journey, and when he comes back, right? Sadi Enak Bakadam Raft wa Basar He said, I went on my feet and I came back on my head. It's a beautiful Persian proverb, you know, in Arabic they say ala rasi, ala aini, you know, on my head, on my eyes. We the Persian the same thing. We say Basara Chashum, the Chashum, you know, on my eyes. I I there's many meanings for this line, but I think that what he's saying, I went as a person of the nafs. My feet was in the dunya in the dirt, but I came with a head, an intellect, right, that is connecting me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Because intellect is that light, is a light, is a nur. So he he comes back and so after 32, 33 years of, of just traveling, he comes back and he, he uh, the king uh, of the time, Sa'ad Zangi, and that's why his name is Sa'adi because his name is not Sa'adi, obviously his name is, is uh, Musulhuddin, but he takes the name Sa'ad because of Sa'ad uh, Zangi, Abu Bakr uh, Sa'ad Zangi. He was the Khalifa of that time, of uh, the, the, uh, the Atabaks. He loves him and the king loves him and honors him. And this is, it's very important to know. These are not like, you know, we have in our modern time, oh, ulama sultan, these are the scholars at the feet of the, the sultans. No, no, no. These are the people who rectified the sultans. They, because if the top is right, the bottom is going to be right. If you have a corrupt leader, then, and I don't have to mention anything about any of the, the people in the world. Look at the Muslim world. Look at the world. Don't look at the Muslim world. Look at the world. I mean, only a couple of countries you can say, okay, there's a good leader, and look at the society's flourishing. Everybody's happy. But if you have a corrupt leader, it trickles down all the way to the corrupt police officer on the street. So they were trying to fix things from the top, bottom, because it's much easier to do that if you have access to that. So because they had a lot of love and respect for Saadi, he would give him. And, and so in 1258, 1255 uh, of the uh, Gregorian calendar of the Christian uh, era, he literally like the bee that gives honey when it's ready. The entire book just came out of, of the Bostan. Like the entire book. He just... 
But, you know, once uh, Sheikh told us a story about uh, Haji Nur al-Din, you know, you guys know Haji Nur, the calligraphy, right? There, there's two calligraphy of him right there on the, on the wall. Haji Nur al-Din, this, this uh, amazing Chinese calligrapher, he does Arabic style Chinese. So somebody went to him and he said, hey, can you, can you write my name on the paper? And he said, yeah. So he went like, he said, what's your name? He told uh, his name and then, so he went like that. Here's your paper. That'd be 30 bucks. And the guy said, that took you like 10 seconds, $30? He said, yeah, it took 10 seconds, but it took me 30 years to master it. It takes time. And a lot of the people, if you look at the history of Islam, they wrote their books at the end of their lives. Nobody wrote books when they were young. Everybody who wrote books when they were young, they regretted it. Like, for me, I taught a, a, a class, a few classes in Mulana Rumi, and that, and like in 2013, 14, and I wish I could go back and just delete that and redo it. A lot of people say, no, it's a great class. I say, yeah, but I wish I, what I know now is like, oh, I shouldn't have taught that class. Literally, I, it, it could be done much in a much better way. But anyways, so he came and then, so he just gave like birth to this book, the, the Bostan. Bostan became the most popular book in the Persian literature. So after... In the, in the Persian literature, uh, it, it's the Quran, the most printed book, and then uh, Hafiz Shirazi's, the, sec, the, the most printed after the Quran, in the history of Persian literature. It's, it's the Diwan of Hafiz. And that's because the Persian, the, you know, especially the Iranian, they, they love that, that book. And then it's the Gulistan and the Bustan of Saadi. So it's like the most popular books that you can have. One of the things about Saadi, when he went on this journey, he slowly found himself. And a lot of people, they want to find themselves in one day. They want fast food spirituality, fast food fiqh. Like, hey, I want to become a faqih in three months. Is there a course? No, there's no course for three months fiqh. There's no course for three months spirituality. It's a lifetime journey. You go on this and you get it, you know. But Mawlana Rumi said, he said, once you put your first step on the path, you're already on the last step. Because he said there's 99 steps to God, right? Palla palla mulaqat khuda. It's step by step until you get to the divine presence. He said, you, the re, he said it's just protocol you have, to, you have to do. That's all. The rest of it is protocol. But it's the first step, which is the, the hardest step to get, to turn away from your nafs, your ego, your desires, and turn Toward Allah. So on this journey, he meets a lot of the ulama, including uh, uh, Ibn Jozi, not the famous, but his grandson, uh, who was also a great scholar. He studies under him, and, and he has a beautiful poem. He says, Mara Sheikh Adonai Murshid Shahab, Du Andars Farmud Bar Rui Ab. Yaki Onke Dar Nafs Khud Bin Nabosh. Digar Onke Dar Jam Bad Bin Nabosh. He said, This great Sheikh. Uh, uh, Sheikh Shahabuddin, uh, uh no, Abu uh, Faraj, he said that he gave me uh, uh, two advice when I was with him. He said, the first advice is never, never uh, see faults in other people. Like when you see other people, don't see faults in them. You know, one of the scholars said, you should treat everyone as a wali of Allah, as a saint. He said, how do you know they're not going to become saint at the end of their lives? So that idea of looking at people with husnudhan, with good opinion of people, having a good opinion, not su'uzan, not having a bad opinion of a person. And the people who want to know about this in English, young people, uh, there's a beautiful talk that John Foster Wallace did, a uh, commencement speech. It's called This is Water. It's on YouTube and it's worth watching because the whole concept is about husnudhan and su'uzan about the world, like how do you look at the world? Uh, so he said that he told me that okay, don't 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 see faults in other people, but he said also in yourself, don't be pleased with yourself. Don't be a person. It's an age of nafsi nafsi. It's me me me. I'm so amazing. I'm so everybody's like about themselves, and they put all this stuff a quote from themselves like oh I'm so amazed I said this thing, and you, really it's funny. Like a lot of these things are, you, you don't know whether to laugh out of, uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes the worst of stuff makes you laugh. So he comes back, but what does he achieve in this journey? The greatest thing that Saadi achieved in this journey 
is visible very clearly in, in one of his poems, which he says that he finally fell in love with Allah. Love is a, you can't claim love. Those who've been in love, they know, right? Those who know, they know. Those who don't know, they don't know, right? This is, the, the, this is what uh, uh, Mawlana Rumi's father, somebody asked him about love. He said, those who know, they know. Those who don't know, they, I can't explain it. You can't explain love. So he said that uh, when he came back, he said, I fell in love with Allah. And all I could think about is my meeting with him. That's it. And the Hadith Qudsi says, if you make all your anxiety, one anxiety of meeting Allah on the Day of Judgment, Allah will remove all your anxiety in the world. If your concern is all like, I'm going to meet my Lord. What? But his concern was different. It's not about, oh, is he going to forgive me? Is he going to throw me in a hellfire? What am I going to... That wasn't the way. He said, uh, that... Uh, There's uh, a beautiful poem uh, about his death. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, uh, I'm losing my memory because uh, I, I got only two hours of sleep last night. But anyways, yeah, okay. So he says, Daron nafas ke bimiram when I give my last breath and I die and I say goodbye to this world and leave the world, I would die with this immense desire and hope of just seeing you. But don't umid ham John ke kui to basham. And I'll give my soul and die. Because I know I become the dirt of your dominion. I become the dirt that you created. But when the morning of the day I will give you a bag of water, I will give you a bag of water, and I will give you a And on that day of reckoning, on the day of judgment, when I rise from this grave, I would rise with my first speech is, where, where's my Lord? I'm, I'm talking to you. And everybody is in the day of judgment is nafsi nafsi. They're trying to find something. He said, I'm just trying to find you on that day. I'm in search of you on that day. People are running away. They're, this is the day, you know, the children are running from the parents, the parents from children, the mothers from the, the son and the daughter. Everybody is running away from each other. It's nafsi nafsi day. He said, even on that day that everybody is running away from each other, I'm running to you, Ya Allah. Hadithi rawzan naguyam. Goli behesh nabuyam. I don't care about paradise. I don't care about the roses of paradise in the center of paradise. I'm not even going to smell the roses of, I'm not even going to tell all the stories of paradise. You know, people said and they talk about paradise, all these amazing stories. He said, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not even going to smell the flowers of paradise. Hadithi rawza naguyam, gulay behesh naguyam. I'm not going to do any of those. Because why? Because all I want is to see you. I don't care about these things. All I want is to see you. That's it. Because the vision of God, you know, in, in, in Ramadan, there's a beautiful hadith, a farhatan, a fasting person has two joy. Farhatun in the iftari wa farhatun in the liqai rabbi. The joy of breaking his fast and the joy of meeting his Lord. And the reason fast is not for eating food. People make that mistake. They say, oh, eating food and break. No. Completing this act of obedience that you abandon from everything, it's so 
that the reward of it is so immense that on the day of judgment, you will just be in the state of ecstasy, just realizing how much reward. And then the next one is seeing Allah on that, on that day, right? May behesh nanusham zedast saqir is one. I'm not going to drink this pure wine of, uh, of paradise from these, you know, this maiden of paradise, the Saki, who's going to give me the wine. I'm not going to drink that. He said, why would I need wine when I'm already intoxicated with you, with your remembrance? And there are people who are intoxicated with the remembrance of Allah. Anyway, so this poem, I think, summarizes Sa'adi's life about what happened to him. He became a lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a servant of Allah. So then he gave these two books. In 1255, he gives us the Gulistan. In 1256, he gives us the, uh, the Bustan. 1256, the next year, he gave us the Gulistan. Gulistan became the most popular book in, in, in Persian uh, literature and, you know, we study Golestan at seven to learn the language, but we study Golestan at seventy to understand what is he talking about, to learn about our lives. So it's it's a it's a book for all ages. So the book is start with a debacha, which is the uh, preface, or uh, uh, he has this beautiful, uh, and I just picked a few lines just to go over so people can see what he's talking about. So Bismillah Rahman Rahim, he said. منت خدای را عز و جل که تاعتش موجب قربت است و به شکر اندرش مزید نعمت هر نفسی که فرو می رود ممد حیات است و چون برمی آید مفرح زاد پس در هر نفس دو نعمت موجود است و بر هر نعمت شکر واجب This is called Nasr Musajja This is a, a, a It's not a poem And this is a prose but it's a prose that actually it rhymes as you read it but it's not it's not it's not a poem and Saadi is one of the the the, the one who uh, started this uh, style of writing and everybody copied him we talked about that last week about the, the styles of writing and in, in, in detail so he said minnat khudaira azza wa jal minnat or minna in arabic is praise is also means indebtedness when you're indebted to somebody in other words, I'm, I'm praising Allah and I'm indebted to Allah, right? Azza wa Jal is, is honor, Aziz is short for Aziz and Jalil as well, the two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kita'atash, that his ta'a, ta'a again is Arabic word, it means uh, worship, right? Kita'atash, his ta'a, his worship, mawjib qurbatas, that it brings you closer to him. So what is he saying here? It is very important for people to understand this concept. He is saying that praise be to Allah that when you worship him he draws you near to him. You get closer. You get this maqam of qurba. You're not going to get any wealth. You're not going to get good health. You're not going to get money. You're not going to get a car. You're not going to get anything of the dunya when you worship Allah. Why is that? Because as-salatu nur, the hadith said, prayer is light. Worship is immaterial. So the reward, like, hal jazawul ihsan illa al-ihsan Isn't the reward of something beautiful, something that, that, that is the same? Why do we fast six days of Shawwal after Ramadan? To show her, one of the reasons, to show her gratitude for Allah. Thank you, Allah, for giving us Ramadan. So we're going to fast for six days the same jinns, genus, to say thank you, Allah, for Ramadan, right? So he's saying that Allah is going to give you qurba. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. So if Allah gives you wealth for your worship, or he gives you a nice car, or he gives you a nice house, that is dhulum. That's oppression. And Allah is not a dhalim. Because on the day of judgment, you will, hold, you will hold God accountable, which you can't. But you will say, I worship you, and then I got a car? What is that? Because 
the qurba of Allah, this closeness that you get is priceless. And that's why worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is priceless. So this is the reason. So now he's saying, But if you're grateful, Allah will give you more ni'mah. Allah will give you good health if you're grateful for your health. Allah will give you more money if you're grateful for the money. Allah will give you beautiful children if you're grateful for your beautiful children. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ The Quran is a formula. If you're grateful, it's a conditional sentence. If you're grateful, Allah says, I will increase you in that to be more grateful. Right? So like a lot of people say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm sick. I have so much pain. And then you ask him like two years later, how are you doing? Oh, I have even more pain now. Well, you didn't learn the lesson. You complain, Allah will give you more to complain about. But if you're grateful, Allah will give you more to be grateful. And this is why our grandmothers, that generation, they never complained. Shukur alhamdulillah. They were in pain. Shukur alhamdulillah. Like always shukur alhamdulillah. But that's how they got better. Because they were in the city of shukur. Now, who are the people who are shakir the most? The ulama. The scholars. They're alim. They know this. They know this verse. They're always instead of shukr. So what is, then why do you have scholars that are poor? Aren't they grateful for the, for the food that they get? Aren't they grateful for the clothes that they have? Aren't they grateful for the little hut or room or tent that they have? Why isn't Allah increasing them in that when they're grateful? And they're poor ulama. And I've seen poor ulama. Well, here's the reason. The first station of gratitude is to look at the ni'mah. Ya Allah, thank you for this shirt. Ya Allah, thank you for the clothing I have. Ya Allah, thank you for the house that I have. Ya Allah, thank you for the... That's the first level. Imam Ghazali says it very beautifully. He said, there are people, they see the pen. So, oh, that pen writes really well. There are people who see the hand. So, oh, that hand writes really well. And then there are people who see the artist. Wow. That artist. These scholars, they no longer see the pen or the hand. They see the muni'im, the one who gives the ni'mah. That's what they see. So their shukr as well is giving them qurba to Allah. Because they are, what is their shukr for? Ya Allah, it is you that's doing this. Allah is giving them more of that that they're grateful for. They don't see the world. It has, it's meaningless to them. Everything that's the world in, in it is meaningless. So then he says, Har nafasi ki furu mi rawad mumid the hayatas. Every breath. And I know like the, the, in our tradition of one son, we had to memorize this when we were like seven years old. I know like people sitting here, they, they just read it from memory. But every breath that you inhale, it gives you life. It prolongs your life. If you don't breathe in, you can't live. You die. Right? Wachun bar mi oyad mufarrahizad. But when it comes out, it actually gives you good health. Now, this is one of the karamat of Saadi. How did he know that? That when we exhale, everything that is not needed in the body, it actually takes it out. So you have a healthy body at every breath. Allah is doing that. Giving you life, keeping you healthy. Giving you life, keeping you healthy. So he's saying that, so know, my beloved, that in every breath, there are two ni'mah. There are two blessings. One for inhaling to get life. One for exhaling to keep it, keep you healthy. So there's two ni'mah and every blessing. Isn't it mandatory to be grateful for every ni'mah that Allah has given you? Shouldn't you say, Ya Allah, thank you. For this blessing. And he's saying this is where, you know, and, and, and the chess game is checkmate. He Saadi just checkmate all the human beings. Literally, he's like, okay, you think you are Abdul Shakur? Let me show you. For every breath, two shukur you have to give. So now, because you have to be grateful to what Allah has given you. So now he says, As das to Zabone Kibaraya. He says, show me someone who has a tongue and the hand 
to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this degree. Who? And the reason uh, in the Sharh of Sudi, in the Gulistan, he said the reason why he used the hand is hand is not just a hand. He's talking about the jawarih, the hand, the feet, the, 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 the eyes, the ears, because they all have their shukr, right? They have to give shukr for every limb of the body, right? The kidneys, the heart. So he's using one as a representation of your entire body. So he said, whose hand, in other words, whose limbs and whose tongue has the ability, the power to be shakur? A'malu ala Dawood and shukr. Wa qalilun min ibadi shakur. O family of Dawood, the Quran says, be grateful, work and be grateful. Because Allah says, very few of my servants are grateful. Very few of my servants are grateful. So he says, then he write, has a poem now. Bandahuman bake is a taqsir khish, ozr badargai khuda ayawara. Warna sazawara khuda wandiyash kas natawana ke bajay awara. He said, so here's what I'm going to give you an adv advice because there's no way you can be as grateful as Allah has given you the blessings, right? He's not telling you not to be grateful. You should be shukr throughout the day. This is a beautiful maqam, a maqam that someone is a shakir, always. And you can see people who are shakur, they're always happy as well because they see everything from Allah. But he's saying, it's better that all of those servants who has shortcomings, which every one of us, you have, anybody say I don't have any shortcomings, they're either insane or they're an angel. Everybody has shortcomings. Kullu ibn Adam khatta'un, the Prophet said, every son of Adam will, will sin, will disobey, will make mistakes. Right? So, he's saying, so let me give you an advice. It's better for all of us who have shortcomings that we just go to Allah with brokenness. And just say, Ya Allah, forgive us. Forgive us. Because no one on this planet can be grateful to the amount of blessing that Allah has given them. It's impossible. Nobody can do that. Right? So, but gratitude has station as well. It starts with the with that station of seeing the ni'mah, and then goes all the way to seeing the one who gives you the blessing. Right? Seeing Allah and everything. That everything is in the hand of Allah. This is the station of happiness. This is when you're really happy. You have, won't have any problem. If you, build, if you have that as a model of your life, that everything have, it's from Allah. What can I do? You know, like we, uh, you know, just a personal story. Uh, our accounts got hacked, and somebody, like, took all, all our stuff. It just I woke up the next day, everything was gone. Like everything you had in your whole life, it's just gone. Like there was nothing in there. Kind of panic, I'm going to account, account change, password change. I don't even have access to anything. Literally nothing I have access to. So I was sitting there, I was like, you know, you get devastated because it's like, okay, who's going to pay the rent and who's going to pay the, all this stuff, the bills and everything because you, you, have, you have zero money literally. And, and, and all your, you know, all your investment is just gone. Somebody just, uh, anyways, this was a few months ago. Be careful. Everybody should have extra security. This is the number one thing now happening in America is, is, uh, is, is fraud uh, on your bank accounts and on cryptos and, and, and other stuff. But anyways, so I was sitting with my wife and I, and, you know, you always, you never want to break these things down like that to your wife. Say, okay, we lost everything. Because, you know, it's very difficult for them because they see you as the one who's bringing, working and bringing the money. And they have that security and, and tranquility. And they, they can really, you can shatter their, their whole world. And, and they, they get depressed on, over these things. So, so I was breaking it out easy. So, you know, this account was, one of my accounts was hacked and this and that. So, okay. And I, and I thought she was just okay. I said, I said, you know what, you have to make really du'as because all our accounts was hacked. And then she looked, she goes, did we pay our zakat this year properly? I swear to God, first thing, did, they, did we pay our zakat properly this year? Did we count everything properly? I said, I think so, but I can double check. Uh, I usually pay more in zakat. 
She said, we must have done something wrong. And that was our whole thing. And for me, it was like a paradigm shift. And I was like, I've been reading these things. But she's living those things. Like, it's different, you know, the people who have that connection. So, and obviously you do what you have to do. But, you know, it, it took a while, about three, two, three months. But alhamdulillah, we, we were able to recover a lot of stuff. So, but anyways, the point is that you have to realize everything is from Allah. And what wrong have you done that this come to you? Like, people always ask about political situation in our countries. And I just, you know, it's the, the best example is Sayyidina Ali, when they went to him and they said, when Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Omar were in charge, like, look, we are like amazing Khilafah, no fighting, no, now ever since, you know, Uthman and you took over, like we are fighting and we have all this corruption and all this stuff. What's, you know, what do you say to that? He said, well, when Abu Bakr and Omar were the Khalifa, radiallahu anhu, you know, they had people like Uthman and me under them. Now we have people like you under us. <laughs> That's the difference, right? So it's, you know, you have to really think about yourself. Again, we go back to that Ghalib poem that, you know, you can't keep wiping the mirror and saying that, why, why have dirt on, my, on, my, on this? No, it's not the mirror. It's you. You have to wipe your face and clean it. But people don't want to do that. But gratitude has station. The greatest station, and this is what you can have in, in the knowledge. You have ilm al yaqeen, ayn al yaqeen, wa al yaqeen. Three levels of knowledge, right? This is ilm al yaqeen. You're learning something. Yeah, ayn al yaqeen is seeing that thing in practice. Like what I, the story I told you, I saw this in practice. And with my wife, just practiced that. I, I, I witnessed it. But then there's haq al yaqeen, living that is that experiential. So Mawlana Rumi said. He said, if you look at the lovers, he said, Shukrana dadi ishqra as tohfaha hu maalha. He said, you are so grateful for your beloved. You love someone, what do you do? Give them flowers, you know, give them a Gucci purse, give them all these gifts of the world. Because you love them. Right? You buy all these stuff and you give them the diamond ring. He said, that is at the very beginning of gratitude. That's at the beginning. He said, anybody can do that. Anyone can do that. They can buy flowers and they can buy stuff and give it to people. He said, you want to know the highest level of gratitude? Why don't you become the gratitude and become the gift? That you are the gift and you are the gratitude. So when you go home, you are the gift. She doesn't need a gift because you have become the symbol of gratitude in a gift. That the, if they ask your wife or your spouse, say, what do you want as a gift? I want my spouse to come home. Well, what about a Lamborghini? I want my spouse. What about a nice? I want. So that is the high level, right? The same thing with a teacher and a student. When a student says, I want my teacher because he is the gift, right? So, he continues. I just want to make sure we're on time. Baran rahmat bi hesabash hama ja rasida wa khan ni'mat bi dariqash hama ja kashida. One of the things about these lines, those who speak Persian, Farsi, or Dari, you would see the perfection in the language. There's nothing you can do to make it longer and make it better. There's nothing you can do to make it shorter and better. You can make it shorter, but it's not going to be as beautiful, as meaningful. You can make it longer, it's not going to be as beautiful, and as, as meaningful. It's perfection of language in Persian literature. The reign of his mercy, that you, the innu, innumerable, you can't count the reign of the mercy of Allah. The reign of his mercy has reached every corner of the world. Allah has two names at the beginning of the nine names. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Right? Rahman and Rahim, the difference between them, both of them are mercy. One is universal mercy, one is particular mercy. The universal mercy goes to everyone. Whether you believe in him or don't, it goes to you. Whether you're a Muslim, a, a Kafir, a fire worshiper, an idol worshiper, an atheist, an agnostic, whatever you are, you get the universal mercy. You get the food. You get the clothing. 
You get the oxygen, the air, you get the health, you get the friends, the family, all of that universal mercy Allah gives you. But then there's a specific mercy that's only for the believer, right? So he says, Barana Rahma, this is the Rahma universal, the mercy universal, has reached every corner of the world. Is there a place that Allah is, you know, uh, is, is, you can't see the hand of providence there? Wahan and Ni'mati be the Khan means, you know, it's short for Dastar Khan, we say in Persian. It's the, the, the cloth that you eat on, right? The, the, the tablecloth, what we call it. And the table, the cloth of the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reached every household. Everybody gets their food. Everybody has food to eat. The reason why each and every one of you are here today is because your parents had food from the time of Adam alayhi salam till now. If they didn't have food, they would have died and you wouldn't be here. Allah, Allah provided the sustenance for them. He's a razaq. In our aqidah though, Imam Tahawi says that we believe that Allah was a razaq before he created people that needed risk. So he didn't get the name a razaq because he had to give us risk. Even before there was a creation, Allah was a razaq. Right? This is uh, just again perfection of language. Parda is a, is a curtain. Parda is also a veil, right? The veil that's between you and humanity. There's a veil between me and you right now. There's a veil between you and I. Only you know yourself and Allah knows. Nobody else knows you. We know you based on how you tell us who you are. And we know you, some of us know you based on our view of you, our perception of you. And this is Mawlana Rumi's cry was that Harkasi Azan Khutshud Yoriman, Azdaruniman, Najus Asroriman. Everyone became my friend and got to know me based on their opinion of me. Nobody wanted to, nobody was interested in hearing what I have to say about myself. Generally, that's the rule. That's the case. People just, they assume about you what they want to assume. They don't care to listen to what you say. But the only one who knows you is Allah in yourself. But then Allah put a veil between you and the humanity. Right? famous poem. That if Allah removes the veil from the work of human being, from the actions of the human being, He said, how many fasiq will become mullah instantly? And how many mullahs will become fasiq instantly? Right? That's the reality. Right? The Hafiz had this problem with all these preachers because they came with their abba and their turban and their qaba and their all, you know, their, this jalwa. Right? right? This jalwa this, this, that they, they, they put on this show on the member. And this is what is on King Jelwa Dar Mehrab Member Mikonan, Chun Bakhelwat Mirawan on Kore Digar Mikonan. He said, Look at the, all these wa'is, all these preachers. They come on a member and they put on this jilwa, this show. It's beautiful. Right? The turban and the abba and the speech and the eloquence. He said, But when they're in their private life, they do other than what they preach. In other words, his father is saying, What a blessing. That Allah has failed because otherwise you would you would not even listen to most of the people, right? So he says that the this veil of your namus, of your privacy, of your honor, of your dignity, of your soul, of your of those things that are precious to you that you don't want anyone to know. Allah does not rip this curtain so people can see. Right? He does not. Even if you sin, disobey him, and you fornicate. Even the fornicators, Allah doesn't show them that this is, person is a fornicator. Allah doesn't do that. He veils you. There's a secret in that. And I, and I will talk about it. وَوَزِفَيْ رُوزِي بَخَطَوِ مُنْكَرْ نَبَرْ In this sustenance, the allowance of your sustenance, because everybody has an allowance, right? 
So whatever you get, that's your allowance. That's why you should be happy with whatever you have. Allah has already written what you're going to get. You should work. You should strive. You should, you know, d- you know, Allah has given you hands and feet. You can't. Saadi has a beautiful story. Uh, I was planning to do it, but it's a very long poem. But it's a beautiful story about about a a, a ruba a a um, in a lion. Uh, um, so this 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 uh, ruba fox, right, or coyote? Fox. Yeah. So this fox is crippled, is handicapped. So this man passes by, goes, Subhanallah, how does he eat? How does he get his food? And then he sees a lion goes and attacks a deer and, and, and hunts it and rips the deer apart and eats it. And then he throws away all the extra food that he's full, just throws it in the air. And it lands right in front of this crippled fox. And the fox starts eating this meat. So the next day he goes, he says, another incident happened. This lion did it. And then he throws it accidentally or whatever. It's just he's like, subhanAllah. Allah is a razak. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do any work. I'm going to sit. So he said, he just sat down and said, I'm going to get my risk. Allah is feeding the crippled <laughs> fox. He's going to feed me. So he sat for a day, two days. Three days, nobody's bringing any food, no family, no friends, nothing. And he's starving. And he's starving. And one thing about spirituality and tasawwuf, people, you know, one of the practices of the, the people of, of, on this path is they don't eat a lot. And the reason why they don't eat a lot, because when you eat, you, you fill yourself and you can't echo. When you're empty, you echo. That is the echo of truth, but we don't hear it. That's why when you go in a valley and there's a mountain on the other side and you say something, it echoes you, it echoes back to you, right? So after a few days when he's so, his stomach is empty and he's like starving to death, he goes, what's going on? Like, Ya Allah, you know, you, you give the crippled fox and I've been starving and I'm a mu'min, I'm a believer and I do dhikr. I didn't get any food, I'm dying, Right? And then the echo of his own soul says, Baraw shira darranda bosh, ay dahal. Mayandos khishra churruba ay shal. Go become a lion. Be a roaring ro- lion. Don't, don't sit like a crippled fox. Right? Don't sit like, Allah didn't create us to be crippled fox. He created us to be lion. Go out and do it. But know whatever you get, it's from Allah and it's written for you. Allah is the one. He gave it to Mayasha, whoever he wants. Whatever he wants, whatever quantity he wants. And be grateful and Allah will increase as the poet said at the beginning. So, this is very important. Because you see a lot of atheists and agnostics that are super duper rich. They don't even believe in God. So he says, Allah will not cut the salary, what is, you know, what is supposed to go to them if they disbelieve in him. If they sin and disbelieve in him, Allah will not cut their salary. They can have it. Why is that? Why is that? Because all of this world and everything that's in it, everything in this world, everything in the heavens and the earth, the galaxies and the star and the moon and the sun and all these. Now they're saying in Mars that these stones are worth, they're priceless. All of them, you combine it, one breath in paradise is more expensive than everything in the world in here. In, in this dunya. One breath. Not the exhale, just inhaling. Because with the first inhale of paradise, every pain, every suffering, every anxiety that you had, everything just gets washed away. And you enter the state of ecstasy and happiness. Complete joy for eternity. So this world, if it had any, any value, Allah wouldn't give those who disbelieve in them a, a morsel of food. But it has no value. It has nothing. And only people who connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would know this. Because through that connection, you would come to know. So, he says, ای کریمی که از خزانه غیب گبر و ترسا وظیفه خور داری 
دوستان را کجا کنی محروم تو که با دشمن این نظر داری I said oh Kareem we talked about why they use the, the name Kareem last week because Kareem is a name of Allah that he gives without asking but if you ask through that name how much he would give so is it oh Kareem that you have these unseen inexhaustible treasure houses and you're giving to to fire worshippers to disbelievers to atheists and agnostics you're giving them this this is look how you're treating them you're giving them food you're giving them family you're giving them friends you're giving them good health giving... how could you deprive your friends when this is the way you deal with your enemies if this is how you deal with your enemies how would you deal with your friends and Allah is the wali of those who believe and a wali is a protector is also a friend Allah says, I am your protector. Allah is the protector. Allah is our wali. Allah, this is the relationship that Allah has put. How could he deprive us from, uh, from this uh, if he is uh, doing uh, this generosity is showing to, uh, to, the, uh, to those who disbelieve in him? It's 3.59. I had a little bit more to go, but I don't, I don't think I can finish it. But, um, but I'll just finish this uh, um, just briefly because uh, I want to respect the time. We start a few minutes late, so that's, I think, the reason. But generally, 4 o'clock, we should wrap up. Maybe a couple of minutes, inshallah. So he says, Har go yake as bandagon a gunahkor. گناهکار پریشان روزگار دست انابد به امید اجابت به درگاه حق جل و علا بردارد ایزیت تعالی در وی نظر نکند he said when a sinful servant who is instead of disobedience and then, and then he feels remorse and he goes ya Allah, ya Allah please forgive me ya Allah, ya Allah give me this ya Allah, ya Allah and Allah is not even looking at him because he's just a sinful horrible servant right Bosh Bachonat Bos Eroskara. Then again he goes to Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, and Allah does not look at him again. I don't even want to look at you. You because it's a sinful disobedient service. Bosh Batis Aru was Zori Bachonat. Wahak Sobana with Allah, me for my. Then he goes in, and, and this is what we talked about last week is when you go to Allah in a state of brokenness and you just break down and you just cry. And you become your own self. You're not doing this as a show where it says, Ya Allah. No, it's just language, you know. Chand as in Izhar Ismarum Majaz. Chand as in Alfazo Ismarum Majaz, Rumi says. How much of this, you know, the eloquence you're trying to put on, your metaphors and your similes and all these, so how much of that? Allah says that, Suz Khaham, Suz Ba'an, Suz Saad. I want burning. That's what I want. I want people to come to me with a burning voice, cry, break down. So he goes, the next time he goes, he keeps going and going. Allah doesn't want to look at him. And then he goes and crying to Allah. And then, Ya Malaikati. This is a hadith Qudsi that's in this book. Again, uh, for the, a lot of people who are on the path of knowledge, uh, especially at the Miftah Institute, this is a poetry class, so it's not an, an aqidah or a fiqh class. So just we'll take the poetry part, and then if you want the isnad for the ahadith and this and that, you can and most you can you know look those up. But most of these things are used in order to teach us a lesson. So sometimes they use ahadith that are weak, but the meaning is sound. But they they're using some of those in order to teach and, and drive a point home. So this is not a, a hadith class. قد استحييت قد استحييت من عبدي وليس له غيري فقد غفرت له دعوتش را اجابت کردم و حاجتش برآوردم که از بسیاری دعا و زاری بنده همی شرم دارم and then Allah says he said I accepted his prayer and I gave him what he wanted because I feel embarrassed from this sinful servant just keep 
asking you and keep asking you to forgive him. So he ends this conversation by saying, Karam bin Lotfi Khodawandagar, Gonah Bandakarda, Gusha and Sar. He said, Look at the generosity of Allah. The sin is committed by the servant. Allah feels embarrassed for what he has done. The servant is sinful. Allah says, I just feel embarrassed like not answering him. Even though he's a sinful servant, I'm going to answer his prayer. So these are the teachings of Sa'adi Rahmatullah Ali. And I think that in our time, we're living in, in, a, in a very interesting time where people are kind of disconnected from themselves, from the reality, from Allah and His Messenger. And you would see in the next session, inshallah, we'll talk about His connection to the Prophet wasallam, which is really uh, marvelous. Uh, you know, how much love He had. We wanted to today showcase His love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and His journey on this path. But His, his and then inshallah, we'll do stories from the Gulistan where he teaches the, the kings, he teaches the, the, the citizens, he teaches the lovers, he teaches the people of Adab. I mean, he just is a teacher, he's an amazing teacher. Uh, they fall on the footstep of a Prophet, وسلم, who was the, the greatest teacher that ever walked on this earth. Uh, I was sent only as a teacher, the Prophet said. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it's amazing to be on this, on this journey with these people. I love these, these, these teachings because it melts the hearts, it makes us human beings, it makes us people that we can actually connect with ourselves, connect with Allah, and use these in our daily lives. These are not uh, things that you can just read and just put it on the shelf, but no, rather it, these are things that you can practice and put in your life, and, and I think that to start the day is that we all should start doing uh, gratitude practices and one of the things that they have done in, in the modern science, they did uh, people who have depression, they, they did a study that if, if, if they do uh, a gratitude practice where they, every day they would say, oh, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for this. And they mention a list of gratitude, some say 10, some say 5, but it actually removes their depression. So I think that if you can do that, like every day when we, when we pray after, after the prayer, just just... Be grateful to Allah for, say, Allah, thank you for good health, you know. Because people, you know, we, we think good health, we, it has to be part of our life. No, Allah can make you sick. And once you're sick, then you would know the value of good health. You don't know something until you lose it. So just uh, just if you do that, that's, you know, for me, uh, this is, you know, some people might like it, some people might hate it. But if you do a lesson and you, and you don't take anything home to practice, you just wasted your time. Uh, so if we just do that for, for this week where we do a gratitude practice that every day we just show three things a day. Just say, Ya Allah, if you have good parents, there are people who have horrible parents. I know converts that, you know, they had really bad life growing up. Uh, so if you have good parents who are loving, gratitude for parents, gratitude for children, gratitude for good health. If you have a roof over your head, if you, I mean, you can, because the blessing of Allah, you cannot enumerate them. So you can just go on for eternity and just thank Allah for all this stuff that He is, everything that He's doing, and also things that He's going to do in the hereafter, inshallah. So, Zakallah khairan, if there's any question, inshallah, but if not, uh, thank you for uh, the team here at MCC for making this happen, the hosting uh, here locally, and then thank you for the Miftah, uh, all the brothers, uh, may Allah bless all of you and the team there. Jazakallah khair and inshallah we'll hope to see you next next Saturday for the third session inshallah. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa